toward that end, I thought it'd be really helpful for you to understand what the resources were, not just here because this is, this is what we're doing here, but also what the other offerings of the university are. And toward that end, I've invited Mike to come and, and talk to us. Uh, I've got some professional information about him that, that speak to specific accomplishments, but don't tell you all of the story about this good <laughs> man that I've had an opportunity to work with for a while. Are you, they're not seeing that, so. Sorry, you gotta drag it to the. I'll drag it to the right, I'm assuming right there. Yep. there. Sorry. There we go. So if you go to UVU and go to uh, type in Michael Walker, you're gonna get this information. Um, he's got two masters now, uh, a bachelor's in history, uh, a master's in history, and the second master's is in higher, ed. higher education. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Michael's aspiration is to, is to be, um, an educator and uh, he does that brilliantly. One of the things he does in the division that he's in is he develops custom programs. We've been holding sector specific um, meetings where we invite construction and I, you know, uh, um, technology and healthcare and even municipalities and say, what are the core training um, needs that you have within your sector that we can develop specific not-for-credit offerings for, and Michael develops those, those specific offerings. And so he developed most recently, for example, um, many, many municipalities in our service region, Payson, Orem, uh, Provo, et cetera, have an economic development division, and they have an economic development specialist whose job it is to attract hotels and Sam's Clubs and universities and you name it uh, to their area to enhance the economic and tax base, the economic activity and hence the tax base of the community. And, uh, and so they, they're discussing the, the, all of the things. Do we do provide tax abatements? What do we do? Performance uh, incentives? Uh, and it's a collage of different solutions. Well, how in the world do you get trained on that very unique niche? Well, Michael developed a specific training program for economic development specialists that work for municipalities. And so we, we've gotten together with, with, like, as an example, the city of Provo and Orm, et cetera, and they have specific educational needs. They don't have enough people that can inspect homes for compliance to code for building. They don't have enough individuals that can inspect construction on commercial buildings. They don't have enough people to, to do infrastructure. You know, when, does the, when do you have to repave? And if you repave, what's the standard? And, and uh, oh, by the way, we, we don't generate our own power, we buy it from Rocky. Oh, we're Provo, we have our own power deal, and so we have an entire infrastructure that has to be inspected and maintained and grown to meet the, the, the growing need of our community. Um, so uh, some have airports, some don't. So we have this core curriculum and then we bolt on the extra stuff that each, that Lehigh or Provo or Orem might need. And that gets taught through the division that we happen to be in. And, uh, and so um, Michael, when he's not uh, in, uh, creating curriculum uh, that's specific to the needs of our, of our very disparate uh, customers in, in our service region, uh, is, is your typical uh, native, um, did you grow up here? I think you, can, you grew up elsewhere. I'm, I'm from Seattle, Tacoma. Seattle, just above me, so just slightly more rain than the Portland area. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we're enjoying the high desert and also enjoying one of the things that was unique to both Dan and to Mike and to me is that we all have this instinct to go work out, but in Oregon and Seattle, are in Washington, your ability to work out and the weather co collaborating with your desire to work out was very seldom in concert you with each other. You did work out in the rain. You did. You worked out in the rain. We're here if you have that that sputtering, ever moving desire to go and actually do something fun outdoors. There's no excuse. It's always beautiful. So he takes advantage of that with hiking and and biking, and he's a snowboarder. Uh, and, um, and enjoys all the offerings of the state a as an outdoor enthusiast. And with that, we'll turn the time over to you to explain your division, if you don't mind. Thank you. So I'm going to try using this. I used to, there we go, can you hear that? Yeah, helps it's on. A little better. Um, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm always happy to talk about what we offer and maybe ways that we can help you um, in your incubators, uh, provide some services that might be unique or um, special for you. Um, I like this setup here. Uh, I used to teach uh, American history for Utah State, and uh, it was 
through broadcast, so it was kind of like Star Wars. And um, and uh, I got eventually got used to these microphones. They, so I apologize if it screams or squeaks or whatever. Um, did the same thing for Slick. And I've taught for UVU for about 10 years as well. So it's interesting what Wynn was talking about, this mix of like practical versus traditional. So I've done a lot of traditional education myself and taught traditional education myself. But in this role that I've been in, I found that for whatever reason, traditional education isn't completely meeting the mission of, uh, well, not for whatever reason, we know why, but uh, isn't completely meeting <laughs> Uh, your needs isn't meeting the community's needs. Uh, there are some wonderful things about you know a traditional education, right? What do you guys think? What what do you what do you value about college education? Learn to learn. Learn to learn. Yeah, okay, I teach ethics and I teach philosophy, right? It's the most practical thing in the world, right? Um, you learn to learn. What else? What did you value about your education or those who you've interacted with who've had a traditional education? Feels good to get a paycheck. Often. <laughs> it feels good to give somebody a paycheck off. Yeah, it's pretty pretty regular, right? UVU is one of the most affordable institutions uh, around, uh, and yet it's still so pricey. I yeah. mean, twenty eight hundred, twenty nine hundred dollars a semester now. Um, Ten years ago, or I guess it's twelve years ago, when I finished my bachelor's, I was paying thirteen hundred dollars a semester at the Idaho in Rexburg, and um, and I thought that was a lot at the time. But uh, it's, and this is, again, you view one of the most affordable in the state, in the country, really. Uh, what else, what else, I mean, what, are there any other takeaways that you found from your traditional education, Jamila? Um, being involved in research or being able to talk to professors who are doing like actual research, it's very informative, I enjoy that. Yeah, the results are, are important too, right? We're giving, we're giving back. So I, I do not in any way discredit um, traditional education. I find it to be very, very valuable and wonderful and important. I have two master's degrees and I'm almost done with my PhD. I definitely went that traditional route. But in this professional education department, I found there's a lot of other things that I just want to learn and do. And I actually took one of our programs. I did our digital marketing boot camp. I loved it. Um, and it was super useful for my, my job uh, and also side pursuits that I wanted to do. And, I'm kind of like a millennial and a Gen Xer. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't know. I don't really identify with either group. Um, but I always have a side hustle. I always have some other project that I'm working on. And I think probably a lot of you are similar. I don't know. Um, or you have friends that, that do that. You might be fo fully focused on your, on your corporation right now. But, but that's how I was. And so I took one of our programs. I took our digital marketing boot camp program because I felt like, you know what? I love digital marketing. I want to learn more. I want to do more. And I want this to be done. I don't want to like spend a full semester and get a whole bunch of theory and not actually learn a skill that I can apply and deal with and use right now. And so uh, before I took the program, I wanted to develop the program. And that was my role in the, in the corporation. So I, I partnered with a local company, 97th Floor. Do you guys know 97th Floor? They're awesome. They're a Lehigh-based digital marketing firm. They do contract projects for Adobe, ESPN, um, OC Tanner, a whole bunch of large corporations and small corporations. They'll work with anyone, and um, they'll come up with a great pricing. I'm plugging them just because they're awesome. If you want a consultant, that's they're my favorite. But um, but if you don't, you know our programs sometimes have that opportunity for business professionals or for your employees or for anybody uh, along those lines. We also partner with corporations. That's our general goal: is to to look to a corporation to develop our programming because we want to make sure that it's always industry relevant, and that's the most important key for us. Uh, we have, I don't know if you've heard of our software testing program. We, we've, been, we've been doing it now for about three years. And a lot of you probably have a degree in CS. I don't know. How many CS people do we have here? No one. Business people, then. Mostly business. OK. Um, well, uh, a lot of CS majors, they, they I'm echoing too much. Anyway, sorry. A lot of, a lot of CS majors, uh, they only finish you know, one class in software testing. It's just one thing that they do, and it's, it's very rudimentary. It's just basic, and, they, and it's done. But it's this whole gigantic and enormous industry, really. And so we developed a pathway with our CS department and with a few different corporations um, for software testing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of our pathways, what we do, and then per perhaps some ways that we can work with you and ways that we can help maybe leverage connections and... and um, do some other things here. Sorry, it's got facial recognition. Biggest mistake of my life is putting facial recognition on my computer. <laughs> I, I, I firmly believe 
that it will recognize anyone, well, it won't recognize anyone's face. So if any of you are working on facial recognition, please, please improve it. Come on. I swear this is going to let me in. You got to stop smiling. <laughs> that almost worked. Okay, it's letting me enter my password. So now what I do is I, I let it fail to recognize my face and then I enter my password. So it takes about four times as long. So it's fun. All right. So you can see all that fun garbage about me. Um, but let me take you to our page. Now we're doing, we're in the middle of a site redesign, so right now it's not the best looking, but we might have the new one up. No, it's our old one. So you can see on our page, uvu.eu slash professional, um, and again, this is undergoing a site redesign right now. It lists all of the things that we're currently offering, um, but we also do, like Wynn mentioned, course customization. Now Wynn is working with giant corporations primarily. But we kind of do the same thing, and we're trying to be as more and more embedded in the two organizations, the two organizations be more and more embedded with each other, uh, as far as that goes, because we have a lot of resources that we want to give to, to you guys and to, to Wynn's group uh, as well. But we do a lot of sort of small corporate trainings, like I work with Vivint, they wanted an Excel training for their employees, and we're extremely affordable, right? We're, we're not really... We are trying to generate revenue, but we're really not even trying to make a profit. We're just trying to serve the needs of the community. We want to make sure we break even and, and go from there. We still have a mentality where we're driven by, by making a profit. So if there's training that you need, or, uh, or in any field really, we'll work with the corporation and uh, we'll develop that training. We'll, we'll bring it from our, uh, our departments on campus if need, if need be, if there's a particular uh, uh, you know, professor or somebody that you want to work with on campus, or if there's a trainer in any other organization, any corporation locally, um, then we also bring them in as well. So our software testing program is one of our sort of uh, gold standard programs. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So it was basically based off an industry need. Exactware, Digicert, and Henry Shine, which is a dental software company, uh, came to us and we came to them kind of at, a, at the same time about four years ago. And they said, you know, we really need to get better trained, better trained people in the software testing industry. We're finding that there's a lot of people who have CS degrees even, and they're really, they don't really want to be software testers, they want to be engineers, or they just don't have that kind of training. And so even though they have a really good base and they're great to work, are great to get trained. We just like to get people trained into this field and have people that can stay in this field that want to be in this field. What can we do? So like Win, Win's example, a non-credit training program opportunity was really the best option. There's a national certification, and so we partnered, we, pair, we developed a, the curriculum with industry and professors, and then we, par, uh, we also added in the national certification test, and we offered a program through funding that we, that we found uh, for less than it would cost to actually hire a corporation from that certification company to offer that certification. And this, what has been the result is a 12-week uh, manual software testing program that essentially you graduate with two certifications, a UVU certification and a national test, and it's become the pipeline to hiring people in software testing uh, at Exactware and at Henry Schein and a lot of other corporations. Um, and we then developed, and so we've run this program for three years now, with tremendous success, and it's uh, it's one of our biggest uh, uh, f funding sources, honestly. And the way we used it, and this is this is some funding that you might be able to have access to as well, um, especially if you work with us. We're the non-credit arm for some of these funding opportunities. We work with our career technical education office, and we get Perkins funding, which is a national grant, a federal grant, that allows for curriculum development. So let's say there's something that one, one that uh, say one of your products that you developed or that you have, you want to have some training made available, or you want to partner with us on a certification. If you want some curriculum development funds, you can work through us, and we can work on, on uh, developing a certification program that relates to that particular need that you have, and then go from there. The Perkins funding will fund those kinds of programs. I'm currently using Perkins funding on our most recent pathway for software testing, our automated software testing uh, program, which is basically uh, development for software automation. And um, we're just launching our, our first section of that course this fall, and it's already got 18 students, and it's doing very well. Yeah? Can you explain a little bit? Sorry, I, I'm, a, I'm just a little bit confused. So sure. You're saying to, to 
to work with you guys to create a training for like our employees or for the users or for so we can do either one. So let's say you want to be in the business of doing a non-credit certification, you can work with us and we can help co-brand that and, and, and offer that. I do that uh, several times a year. We launch several new programs each year. When offered the example for the economic development certificate for municipalities that we're doing, and we put that together fairly quickly. The, we hired the, the, the industry expert, and he actually helped us with enrollments, and we launched that program August 11th, and it took us just a couple of months. It's one of our best examples of just a really quick turnaround. But we also do work with corporations to offer employee training. Uh, and so that's a, that's a huge portion of what we do. So like I developed a, with our faculty, I developed an Excel training customs to, customized to a particular department at Vivint Solar because they had, they had a gap in some of their Excel training that they wanted some of their employees to do. And so we did that with them and then we did a follow up with them. We'll probably do more. Um, Deer Valley Resort, for example, wanted to partner with us and so we created a, a language training program for them. So their employees that speak uh, English very well wanted to interact with their employees that speak Spanish very well. And so we offered an English training for their Spanish speaking employees and a Spanish training for their English speaking employees. And so that was another example. And we were able to leverage custom fit training funds to pay for portions of those trainings. Custom fit paid for half of the Vivint training. Um, well, we're approved for, for half of the training, but it was so little peanuts to Vivint they didn't even bother to apply for it. But uh, Deer, and they paid for a significant portion of Deer Valley Resorts training as well. Yeah. So what about in uh, situations where you need to train like a client of yours, for example, instead of an employee? Does that? So well? that the, the custom fit training funds would work for that as well. Okay. Um, if you develop a certification program, you can also have access to STIT training money, which STIT stands for Short Term Intensive Training. And so our software testing program, the 12 week one that I told you about, that was based off of the STIT funding and that was with a, a client. But let's say, so let, give me an example. What's the product you're specifically thinking about? Uh, there's like a certain aspect that they need to like understand on the data side. And so like the people, the different clients joining our marketplace need to understand how that works and that type of stuff. Is it a, something that you could turn into a certification on your platform? Or you could if you wanted to. Yeah, if you wanted to. Sure. Yeah, I guess technically, yeah. So if you if you wanted to package it like that, or even if it was just a training, you absolutely could get access to some of those funds. Well, are they Utah-based clients? Uh, are we are they? No. No. Most of them are Both of them are outside. Yeah. So the the custom fit funds wouldn't be able to apply it to the ones that are outside of Utah. However, the Perkins and STIT funding can apply to any of the any of those pursuits. So and yeah, what type of range of funding, I guess? It really just depends. The Perkins has a wide range. You know, usually it's ten grand or less in terms of curriculum development. For Perkins, that's just curriculum development. Yeah. Custom Fit is massive. Like they will spend. I mean, that that is millions and millions of Utah state dollars. But it can only go for corporations that have a presence in Utah. So we could probably find a way through your corporation to make it work with your clients, because we would just have them be students. <coughs> so we can, can they can be students of yours and we can have them train here. Yeah, so we could probably find a way to make that work, uh, but that's, that's there's millions of dollars for the, for the custom fit funds, and those pay 50% back to the corporation. They won't cover everything, but they'll pay 50% back. And when I know you've used some of those things, I, we use it all the time. Um, and then the, uh, the STIT training, it has to be um, a certification or a job training type of program, something that will advance someone's career. Uh, but again, the parameters are interesting there. That, that one has a range of about five to $50,000. Okay. So it's not significant in terms of that, but it's uh, compared to like some of the other funds. Yeah. But it's pretty great if you're just looking to do a short-term training for people. Cool. And so that's, that's, that's how we launched, oh, a blank screen. Uh, <laughs> that's how we launched nothing. That's how we launched my face recognition software. Stop smiling. Look Russian. <laughs> All right, let's keep. Oh boy. 
But yeah, that's how we launched our our uh, software testing program was through. Actually, we've used all three funding sources for that one because it qualifies in so many different ways. But our automated software testing program was so successful that Exactwork came to us and said, "We want to be the exclusive partner for this automated software test testing program. We don't want you to co to partner with any other corporations." And the reason is the resultant uh, number of employees that came to them from our manual testing program was so significant that they wanted to corner the market because they were competing with Henry Schein, who is a you know a great corporation, a great uh, very friendly with that corporation, but they were competing with that and other corporations with for, for their graduates from our program, and so that's launching this fall and it's been very successful. But like I said, we can work in almost any industry. Um, Excuse me. Uh, we do. We have a really great digital marketing certification that we launched uh, when I f just after I first started doing this, uh, and then I ended, eventually took the program in June, and uh, can speak volumes now to both how successful it has been, but also how helpful it's been for me as a, a yeoman marketer. Right? I don't. Everyone does marketing, right? Everyone's job is marketing, but everyone's job is sales, right? Uh, but I didn't have those tools, and I wasn't going to go back and do a bachelor's degree in digital marketing, clearly. So, um, we also have launched a PMI, uh, Project Management Institute PMP, Project Management Professional Program, and we've got doTERRA as a client um, starting next week for that program, and Custom Fit will be paying for half of those costs. So if you want somebody to do some project management training, um, we can cobble that together. Now let's say you, can, you your, your single corporation cannot launch or you don't have enough people that you want to train. You're like, I only want to train two people. What can we do? Well, we can contact another corporation and uh, and get, get enough people so that it's profitable to carry a course. Or if you're willing to pay for the cost differential on profitability. We really, our interest is breaking even. I don't get paid more either way. <laughs> so it's lucky that I'm a nice guy and I do good things for you to do. Right, Wynn? Yes. <laughs> for the time being. Uh, we also have a great uh, personal training program, um, but you can see this list here. Obviously, there's probably not a lot of you interested in that, but uh, personally, if you are. Uh, but we do cross a lot of different industries. We're also uh, opening up test prep and those kinds of things as well. Um, our arm does, our office does continuing education, so we do certifications. Our certifications can go on a UVU transcript. And they're there forever. They're housed with the university. They carry the university's name, which carries some cachet and weight. Um, and uh, you know, we can apply that to almost any kind of training. Um, we're always looking for new projects and always looking for new ideas. Uh, we're also a good place for other types of resources. We leverage the university as much as we can. I think you should too. Really, you're, you're both outside and inside the university. You have both advantages. If you want to have access to work study employees, that's something that we can help you with, or we can get you connected right with the people over there, because that's that's a resource that is available for the institution. Um, and like you know, Camille's office does most of your stuff, and, and she's she's your resource partner. But we're a part of this larger umbrella, and so feel free to connect with us and to uh, use our resources. Uh, I love meeting with corporations whenever possible. I love meeting with incubators and, and corporations that are here, that are connected to Wynn, connected to Camille, connected to Peter, uh, because these are, these are uh, they're man magnificent resources for us, and they're things that we can do more for our portfolio. So um, do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I develop courses for the Spanish speaking people. Awesome. Uh, to learn how to do the credit card processing business uh, here in the United States and Canada. So how can your services be a I mean, fit in, in, in what I do? Awesome, yes. So we have a goal of doing a lot more with uh, Spanish-speaking populations for our program. In fact, we're looking to do a whole slew of course material in a variety of different industries with um, Hispanic-speaking populations. And as I told you, we've already done a little bit, and it was super successful. So I'd love to sort of offline and talk with you about the ways that we could work together. Maybe there's a certification we can build, or maybe there's something that we can you know, pair together. We have the full authorization to use the UVU name, and there's probably a million different pathways that we can work together on. Great. I'll get you my card. Sure. OK? Thank you. What was your name again? Alex. Alex. Good to meet you, Alex. Thanks. Thank Any other questions?
Thank you for letting me come in. So one of the, one of the reasons that, that uh, it's important for you to know, Michael, is that you, you, it, I've been just looking at Pure, for example. You know, you've got your you've got your online application. You also will at some point get to the place where you've got employees that may need manufacturing training. You know, how do you if you're not going to outsource it, or or sales and, and marketing training, or customer relationship training? All of those trainings can be tailored to your specific company. So it's just basic principles that then get literally integrated and stamped with your DNA so that it's training that is, we become a, a, essentially an extension of your HR department. So, And we always prefer to co-brand. <laughs> yeah, and, and the reason that, that, that it's important is that for, for uh, however long, and, and it could be, it could be that, that higher ed continues to evolve in really meaningful ways, it is slow. I believe that we're gonna have you know, universities and, and, and colleges for, you know, into the future for many, many, many years, but there may be a lag between the relevance of what you learn in a matriculated degree versus the, the online education that you can get and the custom training you can get. We're in that area that isn't beholden to the traditions of the institution, and we're the little bit of a burn in, under the saddle to be a, a foment change. You know, that's our job. And, uh, and, and so we're, this is an expression of that, of that willingness of, of UVU to change. And Michael heads that up brilliantly uh, with Karen to literally do custom relevant coursework for you. Now there are two types of credit, however. Um, I mean, there, there's the allure to have a UVU stamp on it because it feels like it's not just somebody in their basement that have, that's, you know, I'm now, I'm now a, uh, you know, a, a consultant and I put my stamp on it. This is, this is an institution of higher learning and so there's some more, a little more relevance, you hope, a little more gravity to the significance of the training you might get with that stamp on it. To get that stamp, it has to pass a, a rigor and the rigor that it goes through is the tra traditional taxonomy that you apply to any kind of coursework to make sure that you understand what is the outcome that I'm interested in. And you, you actually begin a course, you build a course backwards. What are the, what's the knowledge, skill set, and attitudes that we want to develop? What are the, if those are the outcomes, what are the sub-outcomes that support those major outcomes? How do we assess whether or not those outcomes have been achieved? What are the exercises that teach, create the neural pathways that help facilitate the acquisition? And then all the way back to what do you do prior to the class, during the class, and after the class for the student, for the instructor, and where does it get advertised? I mean, really, it, it, you start from here back the other direction. And he makes sure that the rigors are applied to that process so that you aren't just training for training's sake. I mean, it, this isn't like a, a Tony Robbins kind of thing where you come away excited and then by the time you get to your car you wonder, what commitment did I just make? You know, what am I, how am I gonna change my world? You know, it's, very, very uh, aggressive in making sure that there are relevant outcomes. And so uh, to know that that's available to you and then for you to engage in it. And all you have to do is call this guy. We'll have his cards for you. We'll send you his contact information. And he will meet with you and develop whatever training you need. And then the other kind of next step in, in rigor is what they call articulated credit. And so we can also do, do, develop coursework that has articulated credit, credit that can be converted to transcript credit. And the difference between articulated credit and transcript credit is that transcript credit has met the rigors of accreditation so that you can get federal funding for the education. It also, depending on the coursework, can be transferred from one accredited institution to another. For those of us that have actually transferred from one school to another, that doesn't always work well, but it's supposed to in theory. So the, the gold standard is is accredited uh, is it accredited for credit transcript credit and the other is articulated credit which can be converted to transcript if you essentially use that currency here. So there are some of the courses that we'll be training where if you decide to go get a master's degree from here, I'm going to go get my executive MBA from the Woodbury. Some of the credit courses, if it's articulated credit, could actually be converted to to transcript credit as an elective in your master's program or an elective in your undergrad program. So we were really um, cognizant of trying to make the academic rigor of whatever we teach meet one of those two standards if that's important. So again, we would, we would help you work. And again, the further up you migrate in that food chain, the more difficult, more expensive it becomes um, as opposed to just a certificate. So anyway, 
Again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We're looking forward to using your resources.